This video is sponsored by Keeps. On February 18th, 1944, Royal Air Force pilots were unexpectedly woken up early in the morning and rushed to a briefing room. Minutes later, the men raced to the airfield, jumped into their mosquitoes, and took off in the middle of a thick mist and rain. Visibility was poor due to the weather conditions, but the pilots eventually got to the French coast and sighted the Nazi-held Amiens prison. The secret operation consisted of bombing the camp in one run, and it was a matter of life and death, as the bombs had to be dropped with exact precision to reduce friendly casualties to a minimum. Once the first bomb was released, French resistance fighters hidden nearby began storming the prison to extract essential resistance and political prisoners. A massive escape operation had just begun. Hair loss can sneak up on you. The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something while you still have hair left, and Keeps is here to help. Keeps is an online subscription service that connects you directly with physicians who help you find the right treatments and products for your specific hair goals and conditions, including clinically proven research-backed treatments to stop hair loss and improve hair growth, and award-winning thickening shampoos and conditioners. The best part is, you can complete the entire process from the comfort of your own home without any awkward visits to a doctor's office or pharmacy. Everything is delivered right to your door, and with convenient refill reminders, you'll never run out of the products you need. It's affordable, too. Keeps products are about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash dark skies, or click on the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash dark skies. The Flames of Resistance as the German war effort began to dry down in 1943, after the Wehrmacht's defeats at Africa and Stalingrad, the Allied powers began to plan the invasion of France to start the liberation of Europe. However, they needed more intelligence to come up with an optimal scenario. If France was to be invaded, American and British generals required detailed information about Hitler's Atlantic Wall and his secret V-1 and V-2 rocket bases in northern France. Any French civilian in contact with the French resistance or the Allies was taken into custody by the Gestapo, the German secret police, and the French who supported the Vichy government. Then, in October of 1943, hundreds of sympathizers were imprisoned following the capture of Roland Fargeon, one of the main figures in the French resistance. Thanks to the mass arrests, the Gestapo figured out that the organization had over 100,000 members, many of whom were supplied and trained by British and American agents. Some of these agents were then captured and taken to the Amiens prison for interrogation. And on February 14th, 1944, another French resistance leader, Raymond Vivant, was arrested and taken to Amiens. By now, Vivant had established an effective information gathering system about the current state of the German garrisons in northern France, and most importantly, about the Atlantic Wall defenses. And with the increasing losses of resistance leaders, Vivant had become a precious asset to the Allied intelligence. He knew far too much about the possible invasion of northern France and the state of the resistance in all of France, which was a liability. Vivant's capture, and that of several American and British spies from the Secret Intelligence Service and the American Office of Strategic Services, could jeopardize Operation Overlord, the invasion of Normandy. The Allies could not afford to let the Gestapo torture these men and extract such information, so the heads of the OSS and MI6, William J. Donovan and Stuart Menzies, respectively, requested a rescue attempt to the War Cabinet. With the help of French agents, a joint effort between the three countries began recollecting information for a possible rescue operation, targeting the VIP prisoners at the Amiens prison. The Washington and London agencies eventually concluded that if the VIPs could not be rescued, they had to be terminated to prevent any information leaks. There were no other options, and it was not going to be easy. Thus was born Operation Jericho, the daring raid on Amiens prison to liberate the imprisoned Allied friendlies. A matter of urgency. There were over 800 prisoners held at the Amiens prison, and most of them were resistance fighters and political prisoners that had opposed the German occupation of France. The place was managed by the Gestapo and French sympathizers, and the foreign spies and resistance leaders were directly handed over to the Gestapo for interrogation. According to British intelligence by the French resistance, prisoners were executed regularly at Amiens after being found guilty by the Franco-German authorities. 
as one of the resistance fighters, Dominique Panchard, informed London that it was likely that Vivant and the Allied foreign spies were next, the planning of the operation quickly accelerated. Subsequently, several resistance fighters disguised themselves as standard merchants and servicemen and were able to gain entry into Amiens prison. The resistance then gathered enough information about the number of guards that protected the prison, their routines, and the areas that could be used as a defensive position in case of an attack. Meanwhile, other members saw the prison's blueprints to see where the prisoners were located, and the rest studied the outer walls and their thickness. Unfortunately, several French soldiers were captured by the Gestapo and shot. This also led the Germans to reinforce the prison's courtyard with several MG-34 and MG-42 machine guns. A ground attack was then deemed impossible, unless the prison was softened up by an air attack, precisely what the British envisioned through aerial reconnaissance photos taken during the following days. Planning the Operation Air Vice Marshal Basil Embry was initially tasked with the operation, but had to leave because he was also part of the planning of the invasion of Europe. Operation Jericho then fell under the command of Captain Percy Charles Pickard, who had already conducted over a hundred missions during the war. Pickard then resorted to the Wooden Wonder, the trusty DH-98 Mosquito Bomber, to carry out the operation. His two crew aircraft would be the key to the mission's success. The Mosquitoes were small, fast, and good for low-level attacks, precisely what Pickard and his Mosquito Task Force needed. However, Picard's task force did not plan to destroy the entire prison, only the northern and eastern walls, so that as many prisoners as possible could have time to escape. Still, other bombs were planned to be dropped over the mess hall during lunchtime to maximize the number of enemy casualties. Before the attack, over 100 resistance fighters, equipped with Sten submachine guns and pistols, would gather around the prison to assist the prisoners and help them escape. And bicycles and cars were parked nearby so that the prisoners could hop into them and escape faster. Meanwhile, some resistance personnel got dressed in SS uniforms and went into the prison to help the prisoners and inform them of the possible rescue attempt. The prisoners were told to be watchful of upcoming aircraft, as that was the signal for the breakout. However, the prisoners and the resistance fighters did not know that there would be friendly casualties, as the British did not share this detail. The reason was simple. If the prisoners were not liberated, they were going to be executed sooner rather than later and it was worth the risk. RAF Strike Force The raid was set for February 18, 1944. Pickard's men were woken up at 6 in the morning and shown a plaster model of the prison to plan the low-level attacks and familiarize themselves with the Amiens prison. At 10 a.m., Pickard's 18 Mosquito and 2 Typhoon task force hurriedly took off under poor weather conditions after they were allegedly informed that 100 prisoners would be executed that day. The operation could not be postponed, even if the aircraft were enveloped by mist and snow. Visibility was poor, but the pilots carried on. However, four Mosquitoes had to turn back before arriving at the coast of France, and only nine made it to Amiens at 12.01 p.m. Pickard was leading the way, and the Germans were caught by surprise. Three aircraft then headed straight for the eastern and northern walls, while the other two went for the local railway station to cause a diversion. At the same time, the remaining aircraft approached from afar to bomb the main building. The pilots were nervous, as they only had one run to strike their targets. Still, they did what they were asked to, and dropped their 230kg bombs from over 30 meters. After the aircraft bombed the targets, Pickard circled the prison from over 150 meters and saw prisoners running through the rubble. The resistance fighters then got out of cover and began taking down the few guards that survived the mess hall bombing. When this happened, the retreating Mosquitoes were intercepted by German FW-190s. Two Mosquitoes and two Typhoons were shot down. One of them was Pickard's, and he did not survive the crash. A hundred prisoners eventually did perish at the hands of the German soldiers who managed to regroup. And two hours after the attack, several search parties went after the inmates. Of the 800 prisoners, 102 did not survive the bombing, and about 250 managed to escape. From those who made it, only 79 were verified resistance fighters, and two-thirds of the escapees were recaptured within the next 48 hours. The Raid's Controversies Details of the operation were never clarified, 
and it was never made clear if Vival and the British and American spies survived the raid and made it out. Strangely enough, the top brass of the Royal Air Force immediately launched an investigation to find out who had ordered the operation. The heads of the American and British departments had made a request, but it was never disclosed if they had approved the operation. Furthermore, Maurice Buckmaster of the French intelligence affirmed that he never ordered an airstrike at Amiens or made any sort of request for British aid. Some experts have said that the raid was coordinated exclusively by MI6, which might have faked the reports of the alleged German mass executions to extract some of their own secret agents, but the British intelligence has kept mum about it. As of this day, the true nature of the raid on Amiens has not been disclosed. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the strange covert raid conducted by the Allied powers before the invasion of Normandy. Do you think there was something that the Americans and British were trying to hide from the Gestapo?